Thank you. That is, no matter where I move my foot, I could feel the thing keep coming after me. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Um, I, I was going to say, and of course, uh, from time to time, I'll also invite um, uh, our other members of clergy to share in uh, Bible study, uh, possibly um, with uh, a short series, um, two or three um, sessions, uh, just so that you could hear, have a variety of ministry and a variety of um, approaches to the text. All right. So that's just to set a context for our Bible study. We haven't had that opportunity to um, talk about Bible studies as such. So there we are. Psalms 1, part of book one of the Psalms. I want to run through quickly uh, the slides we looked at already and praying that when I get to the slide, which we did not look at, I will remember and stay a little longer there. All right. Okay. We read from uh, two different translations of the um, scripture. Uh, this time we read through the King James Version and the Revised Standard Version. Okay. Uh, and the point I made was that language should be an aid to understanding. So um, I appreciate the fact that uh, there's a long history of the King James Version, uh, especially within the uh, uh, English-speaking Caribbean um, Yes, English-speaking Caribbean and the English-speaking world. Um, that is not the same in all other places. Huh? Okay, um, the translations are different uh, based upon the particular language they are using and the age and translation that is most popular is also varied. Okay. Uh, Secondly, the feeding of the mind and the spirit is important. And so we need to ask God to illuminate our minds as we look into the scriptures, but also to build up our spirits so that we are able to engage in the spiritual arm warfare that also comes with reading and studying God's word. Uh, it's important that we have understanding and we have inspiration. And let me say that the Bible is uh, a book that could be understood. The first or one of the oldest illustrations we have of quarantine is contained in the Bible. All right, so if you were a biological microbiologists or so, and you went to the Bible text, you could find there scientific rules for how to control a disease. All right, um, anybody have an idea what I'm talking about? Anybody know where I'm talking about in the Bible? No, I know. Now, I hope this is not because you are afraid that pastor might say you're wrong. Because that's all right. I've always said I don't know the places in the Bible, I could tell you the things, but I could never tell you where I could find it. And quarantine. Well, okay. Um, well, in the book of um, Leviticus and Deuteronomy, 
you would see rules pertaining to if people had leprosy, if, if there was mold in one's house, and a number of instructions like that. And it is there that you will find also instructions about keeping people separate from the major part of the population. And they had to be declared that they were clean. And there is rules on how many days uh, they must be clean before they could be accepted back into the community. So um, I didn't really want to stay there long. So I'm not supposed to be doing these verses up here, right? But uh, I'm just saying that understanding and inspiration do not have to be in opposition to each other. Okay? In the in, um, Bible, they're not in opposition to each other. Okay. All right? We can have both understanding and inspiration. Now, there are some people who choose understanding by itself, and there are others who want inspiration by themselves. Okay? But they are both there in the text. And um, I find it both worthy that God has given us uh, both a mind and a spirit. So it must mean that he wants us to also engage the mind. All right? Then uh, we then went on and we uh, just said that we need to take a look at the um, background of the text. And I made the point of that asking questions facilitates learning. Okay. Please, please, please do not stop your children, your grandchildren or your great grandchildren from asking questions. Don't say, boy, you have asked too many questions. Okay? Or girl, as the case may be, stop bothering me with your questions. That facilitates learning. It, it is supposed to open a door to new information. Curiosity opens doors for new information. Okay? And that includes the studying of the Bible. We then talk about um, the difference between reading and Bible study. And I just wanted to make the point. It looked like you have some mosquitoes there too, um, Reverend? No, no, no. Reverend, right? No. Okay. No. Okay. All right. Um, I, I wanted to also make the point that our approach to the Bible is sometimes affected by our experience of what we call study. All right? So that when there are people who say, um, I don't like to study, okay? Um, it normally comes out of a bad experience we had within the school system, which was primarily about uh, rote learning, okay? Wrote learning and I had attached to it a system of rewards and punishment if you learned it the way the teacher wanted you to learn it. Okay? So um, I'm just saying if you have had a negative experience of studying in your past, in your childhood, that's something that you need to ask. For the Lord to help you in terms of healing so that you'll be open, right? And that's one of the things I said. Don't be afraid of asking a question because it may sound wrong or somebody may say you're wrong, okay? That comes also from the intimidation that used to come in the classroom, all right? Everybody laugh at you if you say something and you get it wrong, you know? Uh, we are not in that situation. This is collaborative learning. So Reverend Delaney shares something about when I had first heard that scripture, this is what I thought it meant. And then um, Reverend Joseph comes in and say, uh, I heard a preacher say that this meant so and so. And uh, Sister Diana says, well, um, I didn't understand that text at all. I thought that, um, that it, I, I couldn't understand what it meant. And, you know, so we have different contribution and that is called collaborative learning. 
let me move on quickly. Okay. Um, it's interesting in uh, Reverend Grant's re reading of the scripture, I think you said, um, was it two men, two different men, or uh, the but heading the that, uh, yes, that you read just now. Two ways. Two ways, all right? Okay, um, and that's a heading. That is not part of the Bible. Huh? That's a commentator putting in a comment, all right, to help those who will be reading the text. Two ways. Compare and contrast two different li lifestyles. That's what the Psalms is about. We said before that the Psalms are divided up into five sections, and this Psalm is in book one. Uh, under classifications, we identify that this psalm is an ethical psalm. It talks about right and wrong. Okay. Am, I, am I right that everybody has a copy of this um, slide slideshow? Did we send this out already? Um, I don't see it. No? I don't have it. Okay, okay. It hasn't been. All right. Maybe when um, we finish, okay. Uh, all right. Um, right. About the Psalms, we said some were poems and some were songs. Okay? Some were poems and some were songs. Um, and I want to say this. They were popular songs. So we may have an issue today about pop songs or songs that are popular on the radio or TV, okay? Uh -huh. But these were the equivalent of the popular songs in Jerusalem and Judea or sung by Jewish communities that lived in Egypt or in Ghana or in... Uh, Libya or in Europe. Okay? They were popular songs. There was not a problem in the mindset of the Jews or the Israelites that to sing of God in a popular idiom was somehow not sacred. Okay? All right? A song to be sung, a poem to be delivered. Right. This is a new slide that's in here. Um, I just wanted to re put it here to remind myself that, uh, let me see if I got it right now. It's Song of Solomon's Job. Uh, it's Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. Um, is there another one? Have I made? Song of Solomon. Yeah, I said Song of Solomon. Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. These were called the wisdom literature. The wisdom literature. All right? In other words, inside of it was considered to be wisdom. I just want to keep that in mind as we continue. All right, um, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 1, uh, we said that a learning tip there is be careful who you choose as your advisors. Be careful who you choose as your advisors. Because as the blessed those who are made holy, wholesome, or worthy, you have to make sure that your advisors are also holy, wholesome, and worthy. You with me? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Amen. Don't fall into that category of the blessed ones, those who are made holy, wholesome, and worthy. And have as your advisors people who are unholy, 
who are not wholesome and who are not worthy. Okay? Now, that doesn't mean you, you don't talk with those kind of people. All right? But I'm just saying we need to be aware. And we also need to be aware of who we line with. All right? Okay, That's yeah. right. Okay, uh, the people we hang out with and be careful of the loose talk. Okay, All right? which comes up in the Psalms that says, uh, blessed are they who walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way, so who do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, or stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful or the mockers. All right? Okay. So make, be careful of the crowd you hang out with. Mm -hmm. But their delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law that they meditate day and night. I was looking at the Good News Bible rendition of that verse and it says, instead they find joy in obeying the law of the Lord and they study it day and night. Okay, the ones who are blessed, those blessed ones, delight and meditate on God's word. They find pleasurable interest in God's word, and pleasurable interest facilitates okay. study. Okay. Now, if anyone thought about anything over the week as we were looking at this and want to say something, please just hail me, all right? Call out. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit in their season, or bearing fruit each season. Okay. Your fruits are a reflection of where you spend your time, and what you absorb from your environment. Okay, so our attitudes, our thoughts, our behaviors, our habits, will dictate or will illustrate, sorry, um, where we hang out, who we speak to, the ideas we raise, okay? Um, and this is important uh, for many of our young people because sometimes as young people, we will perceive or think that our parents don't want us to have fun. But we just have to be aware that the fun they can have can also be in a wholesome environment, in an environment where they are not at risk. Okay? Um, and so, as a church, it is behoving on us that we ought to have fun activities for children and young people. Okay? Do I need to say that again? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it is important that we have fun activities for children and young people. Amen. And adults. Within. Pardon? And adults? I'm not talking about, uh, I was talking about children. Children. <laughs> okay. okay. I will address adults in a minute. Okay. I, I, I wanted to pull out their point because we adults can be so serious about, uh, because we are looking at life as adults. We fail to understand that an important learning part of children's socialization is play, having fun, okay? But we can, and so we have to create safe space for children to play and have fun, okay? Even as, um, I, I remember there was a show that came on TV in the Caribbean from the States. Um, it wasn't very sophisticated. It was a guy with two puppets on his hands. 
but it was a Christian show. And it was amazing how this show became popular in the Caribbean. Uh, this may be before your time, um, uh, Reverend Grant. Okay, but, um, you know, and this little puppet show was children will come and sit down in front of this little black and white TV watching uh, this man with this puppet. And really, there was one that was good and one was evil. One was always naughty and one was always obedient. And, okay, but I'm just saying that whole issue of um, fun, uh, especially in the development of children, okay? Um, and coming from a particular religious background, all right, uh, there are times, uh, uh, no, let me, let me say that I'm straight. There are certain strains of um, Pentecostal teaching that made one guilty about having fun. Okay, all right. Um, and so there was a time when you couldn't go to cinema, you couldn't go to the sea, the bay, um, all these sort of things because they were all considered to be um, uh, worthy. Uh, what's the term? Worthy. Worldly. Worldly, yes, yes. Worldly. Okay. Um, now, uh, the Christian um, film production is one of the most profitable um, industries that you can find in Hollywood, okay? Um, Christian films and Bible film films make a lot of money, okay? Uh, but I'm just uh, saying that there was a time. So we almost feel if I enjoy myself, something must be wrong, okay? All right? Let me um, particularly speak to the point of adults having fun. Okay. Um, fun or enjoyment or humor is not the opposite of being holy. One has to ask what is the motive and what is the environment? And finally, what is the fruits? Okay, within that context, okay, um, I, I remember that there were some Christians who, if their brother or sister will be there and so forth, it is possible to um, uphold one's Christian faith and still stay within um, those kinds of contexts. What we have to be mindful of is that we do not compromise ourselves, either being made a fool by drink, okay, um, or eating too much, which is also foolish, okay, or, or um, putting ourselves in a situation in which we could be in danger uh, in terms of or physical danger or, or, um, or even, uh, let, me, let me use a term that, that is eroding on our spirit, okay? So, um, I mean, I, I now have a greater capacity to be able to watch certain films, especially if I'm trying to understand where young people are coming from. I've had to build up the resistance to the amount of cussing that could go on in some films. All right? Uh, it's not the easiest thing for me, but in order for me to get to a point where I understand what the issues are, sometimes I have to 
listen to the way they frame their sentences and their words and and so forth. Uh, are you all understanding what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I, I, um, the F word is not a, a, a word that um, I am comfortable with, but uh, there are several um, other letters that I'm not comfortable with. Yeah, I find it extremely, extremely offensive talking about females um, in a derogatory way, uh, ways uh, that liken them to a female dog or other um, things. I don't need to elaborate any further um, because I believe, one, that every human being is made in the image and likeness of God and ought to be respected. All right, that is the principle. But also... Um, the issue of uh, respect, respect for each other. And if I can describe you as a dog, then I'll treat you as a dog. All right. Um, no, that is considered old fashioned by some, um, but those are certain standards and um, I also believe that um, uh, men and women may have um, different biological functions, but that in the sight of God, we are equal. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that is why in, I think it is in Romans, Paul says, we are neither male nor female. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. It doesn't mean that we don't have a difference in biology and so forth, but in terms of before God, okay, we're neither male nor female. And so we are both to be respected. Um, I've stayed there too long, but I suspect there might be one or two questions. So let's take it now. I'll have a drink of water while you think. No, I didn't have a question. I was just making a comment. I just wanted to share a comment that I was once in a group, and just like you, there's I, I have very strong views in where we describe ourselves, kind of leads us to behave in a particular way. And I was in the I went into the group of mainly the men were making the statements, and I objected to it, and I explained my objection to it, and it was a female that actually attacked me more so and and kind of then egged them then gave the men again the responsibility i don't think i've i've contributed to that group since then because i'd lost Sorry, all repeat, respect repeat this again you froze for a minute oh which part did you care up to um a female said something they, she agreed with the way in which they were describing female, right, the language right. they were using, yeah, yeah. and that therefore then gave the males permission to continue the way they were behaving and describing. And I don't, I was saying, I don't think I said anything in that group since then because I lost respect for um, almost all of them, especially the females that were in the group. Okay. Um, but you understand why that is? Yeah, yeah, and I and and I was, I was sad because I couldn't, I couldn't come up with a one-time way of trying to let them understand how, why they were behaving that way, and that that is not the way it should that they need to be. So I've kind of like probably opted to do it more on my page, my Facebook page, and hope that some of them are there to hear that they don't have to be like that. But in that environment, I couldn't, I couldn't come up with something that would trigger um, value and respect and knowing that you're royalty and that you're special. I couldn't come up with that in, the, in that particular moment. That would not have been like dashed against the wall. Yeah. Um, okay. Point taken. Uh, it we have to um, understand that uh, when people are 
socialized in a particular way. That's the way they've been socialized. And that I, for a long time I said, no, it cannot possibly be that a woman could believe that it is right for her husband to beat her. Mm -hmm. But I have heard women defend mm -hmm. uh, the right of a husband to beat them. Okay? Yeah. And it's about how you've been socialized. All right. Okay? All right? Um, you've seen this two, three generations. You think that this is normal. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, and if you believe that the only way one can object to another's comments or behavior is to be physical, then that's what you will expect. Mm -hmm. okay? And that's what you will demonstrate on your children. I, uh, <clears throat> I was walking down Nelson Street um, in Port of Spain. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say Barbados. I could let that one go by faster. <laughs> well, uh, I, I am very much aware of the fact that when you have a common colonial history, you also have common streets named after the colonialists. All right? So you could actually go through most of the Caribbean islands that are colonized by Britain and find similar names. King Street. Queen Street, Prince Street, Duke Street, Nelson, um, all of their champions have their names in our um, cities. Okay? Um, but you all don't want to take me down that road. Folks, you are distracting me from the Bible study. <laughs> all right? Okay, um, uh, where was I? I was going down Nelson Street, and I heard a lady reprimanding a child in the most foul way possible. Now, Nelson Street in Trinidad and in Port of Spain in particular is um, considered to be a deprived, disadvantaged area. And it, 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 it grew on my spirit so much that I stopped. I turned around and I walked back to a place where I could see who is this person talking to whom. And I said, sister, please, if you speak to that child that way, that child cannot grow up with respect for you. You know, um, the lady was <laughs> so shocked because um, one, she didn't realize that she was talking that loud, I guess. But, um, you know, uh, and just to say that we grow up accepting certain things and then we feel free to use those same motives, same language, same symbols with our children or with the next generation. Um, By their fruits, you shall know them. All right, I will say no more about the mangoes. By their fruits, you shall know them. All right. You missed it, did you? Uh, okay. Um, okay. We'll do this. All right, verse four, but not the wicked. They are like the worthless chaff. I think this is where we got to, right? Okay. Um, verse four, but it should be like the chaff which the wind drives away. It's an interesting statement. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. Whatsoever you do, it shall prosper. The um, translation I'm looking at here, uh, the good news says, you shall be successful in everything that you do. You shall be successful. That's interesting ref um, reference here. And whatsoever you do, it shall prosper. And then it contrasts 
the non-righteous, uh, the ungodly. They are like worthless chaff scattered by the wind. Now, um, it's important for us to understand that um, the Bible is not saying that human beings don't have worth. What it is saying is that our behaviors can make us lose value and lose worth in the eyes of each other, okay? All right, our behaviors, our values, our um, attitudes, our habits can make us lose worth. Um, in other words, we, we belittle ourselves. Okay, I have here that lightweights are impressionable. People who are easily led by others are normally led down the wrong road. Okay. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Persons of substance stand their ground on principles, values, and behaviors. All right. Persons of substance. Let's say others um, are one of my. Uh, pastors during my childhood years used to say, others may, but I cannot. Others may. Uh, okay, so you may say, well, yes, other people uh, does it. All right, um, I remember once my son came in and he used certain language. I don't know, I said, um, you don't say that. And he said, but all my friends do. I said, all your friends don't live in this house. I think he got the point. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Others me, but I cannot. Okay. Um, and um, I wanted to talk a little here about transferable skills. Okay. All right. Because our head is in the Bible day and night, we meditate on it, does not mean that we cannot be, let me say, street savvy. All right? Um, in other words, that we cannot be aware of the ways of the world and be aware of how to carry ourselves. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. There are transferable skills. So this is a psalm about ethics, okay? There are transferable skills here. I mean, we could um, read this and begin to speak in tongues, and we could read this and say, right, I know how to address um, people when I'm in the street. Okay? Transferable skill. And we ought to always be seeking to be able to find uh, spiritual food and food for our mind and our practice outside of the church context. Sure. I find you all are rather quiet. I have a feeling I either putting you all to sleep or... No, I'm awake. <laughs> Sister Glynn, is you there? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Um... You know, somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Somebody say something. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, any comments, Sister Glennis? No, sir. Not at this time. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Um, I could have right. answered uh, for you. Pardon? I could have answered. <laughs> okay. The ungodly are not so, but I like the chaff which the wind scatters or dries away. All right? So we must not be impressionable. 
And again, I wanted to um, illustrate with young people. We have got to develop, uh, the, and this is why we want to sit down with them and talk and reason and help them to reason so that when they go into the school context, who says that, um, you know, that, you know, it is old fashioned or wrong to be um, sexually pure, okay? To have not lost your virginity behind the bicycle shed, all right? Whether that be male or female, okay? Um, but in order for our young people to be able to have those kinds of conversations in a meaningful way in the park or in the school or at a party, they need to have those conversations with us in church and in our homes. Mm -hmm. Because it is there that we are able to help them to frame their arguments, but also help them to think things through. That's right. Okay. All right. Now, if we're so sanctimonious, okay, if we are so spiritual and holy that we cannot entertain those kinds of discussions with our children and grandchildren and so forth, they are going to go and look to somebody else to have those discussions with. Amen. That's right. Yeah. All right. So I, I, I used to sit down there and I'm listening to uh, the pastor talking and the elders and so forth in church about what we don't do as Christians and don't, don't, don't. And then one day I just have to say, so what do we do as Christians? Because we approach Christianity from such a negative point of view. Is there something that we do that we could talk about? Why do we do what we do? You know, and that's what we need to help, uh, you know. And, um, you know, I encourage Christians to join the debating clubs. And even in, uh, in one case, I had a debating club in, in a church. Okay. But most people who get into debating um, uh, sessions, uh, the best of them tend to become lawyers. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because they learn how to carry an argument. Mm -hmm. you know? okay? I was talking to one of the Caribbeans. Um, I consider her one of the top lawyers. Uh, I think that she's well on her way to becoming um, a judge with the Caribbean um, uh, Court of Appeal. And I was talking with her yesterday and I said um, uh, to her that um, I was looking at a legal argument in the book of Habakkuk. She said, what? I said, yes, in the book of Habakkuk, I was looking at a legal argument. So she said, where is that? So, you know, we're having a bit of discussion. So what I'm saying is, please, don't isolate the Bible just to what you consider to be church language or church work, mm -hmm. let us apply it right across the board in helping to shape our young people for the future. Yes. Yeah. All right, this is what chaff looks like, folks, in the Eastern culture. This is that, mm -hmm. um, although I remember, okay, um, I guess Reverend uh, Joseph will um, support me here. I remember my grandmother having a basket, a very shallow basket, where mm -hmm. she used to have the rice where they didn't take out all of the husk. And she would take the rice and throw it up in the air in this basket. And the breeze would blow, the chaff would be blown away, and the rice grains would stay. You remember that, um, Reverend Joseph? You don't know about that? I've never seen, well, my grandmother died before I born, so I, I never seen oh, my mother. Do. 
Okay, okay, okay. All right. But um, let's get rid of the chat. And what it is, is that every wind of doctrine blows them away. Yeah. I remember growing up once and there was a young guy. In the five years that I um, was aware of him, from about 11 to 16 or 12 to 17, he got baptized in every single denomination that was on the hill. Okay? There's a Baptist one time. He was a Seventh-day Adventist. He joined oh the Pentecostal. He joined the Nazarene. He joined... Why, love? Okay. Um, but he, every... Any wind of doctrine that came... God. You know? Um... We need to demonstrate stability. And stability only comes through the reading, studying, and application of God's word. Verse 5, Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. In the Good News Bible it says, Sinners will be condemned by God and kept apart from God's own people. Sinners will be condemned by God and kept apart from God's own people. They will be condemned, the text tells us, in life and in death, there are accountability moments. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right? What you sow, what you, reap. you shall reap. That's called accountability. Mm -hmm. All right? And whether you are prince or pauper, life always provides a moment for accountability. Okay? So judgment mm -hmm. can be understood in a negative way, but it is also a positive way. What you sow, that you shall reap. Right. In other words, a judgment would be made upon how you lived your life. That's right. That's right. When we have to answer for what we have done, that it's called a judgment is also an exam, you know. It's an examination. All right, you said you studied. Okay, you have to sit down for two hours and let us see the evidence of your study. It's called an exam. All right. Examinations are a fact of life. And I have a note here about environmental justice. Um, the very earth will judge us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, isn't there a scripture that says that if we fail to praise God, the very stones mm -hmm. will cry out? That's right. The environment will make a judgment on us. You have mouth, you have hands, you have feet, and you don't want to praise God. We who are supposed to be not living, all right, unintelligible, mm -hmm. we will praise God. Isn't that interesting? The very environment. Amen. Yeah, or to Amen. use um, another um, Psalms, I think it's Psalms 24. The heavens declare the glory of God. Yes. And the fragment. Yes. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The fullness the world and they that dwell therein. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. The very earth will cry out. Okay. They will make a judgment. Okay. That's right. Um, Let's just go on to the next slide so that I could leave a few. Oh, no minutes for questions. All right. Um, so here in the fifth verse, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Um, your righteous works will separate you. Okay. Your righteous works will separate you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just as uh, ungodliness takes you one way, 
righteousness takes you the other way. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I was doing a seminar, um, one of several seminars, just a glimpse I myself used to do with some young people between 16 and 25. And I did this seminar on anger management. And uh, afterwards, uh, these young people came up and said, So, we make a bet among ourselves. So I said, What were you all betting about? Okay. Uh, several of them made a bet that I bet you he's a preacher. <laughs> all right. I didn't pray. Um, at least not for them to hear, all right, or see. But in my dealings with them, I was just dealing with the subject of how you manage your anger, okay, and how emotions work. But they said, from the words I used, the illustrations I used, they came out with a conclusion, at least some of them did, that he had to be a preacher. So they came up afterwards to find out who won. Okay. Your righteous works will separate you. The fact that you stand up for the weak, the sick, the vulnerable, the poor, those works, people will say, that's a Christian. Mm -hmm. They will know that you are Christians by your love one for another. Let's look at the last verse. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. Okay. Uh, another translation says, the Lord watches oh, wow. over. Oh, yes. <coughs> Okay, the Lord watches over the path of the ungodly. So that means when we are walking, we are not on our own. All right? Remember there's another um, scripture that says, commit your ways unto the Lord, and he will direct. Your path. For the Lord watches over the path of the ungodly. So I am so glad that the Lord runs up in front to check out the path that I have to walk on. Okay? And sometimes you will see danger up there and just give me a push and make me go down on the left-hand side because he knows that straight ahead there is danger. Amen. Right? The Lord Mercy. watching for the path of the ungodly. Lord is watching over you. Yes. As we commit yes. our ways, as we pray. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was, as I mentioned to um, those who were on the prayer meeting uh, yesterday, I had to preach last night. And the preaching was within the context of a prayer meeting. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there were over 100 people on Facebook and Zoom. Um, wow. in states and different places and um, the thing is uh, our praying we just knew that the Lord was watching over us mm -hmm. guided mm -hmm. us and, uh, yeah. and I am sure that we are going to get callbacks or feedback about how many miracles was done how many prayers that were answered you know and I thank Pastor, that was at Pastor Miriam Church no, no, it wasn't. This was the Jesus Life Center in Kelly Village. It's oh, the first okay. church that I pastored in Trinidad. Okay, okay. Yeah, way back when I had first come into ministry. Okay. Uh, then, then I was with the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies. Oh, I see. Yeah. And they found me on Facebook and invited me to join the um, Okay. Uh, well, to preach at that um, thing, but to join in that, that kind of outreach. Okay. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. He watches over the path of the godly. All right. We must remember that every path 
leads to a destination. Okay. There is no path that leads nowhere. Every path leads to a destination. So the question That's is, right. what, what path That's are right. we on? What path are we on? There's a road that leads to destruction, and there's a road that leads to eternal life. All right. Remember, we were told two different lifestyles, two different ways. Life choices affects life destinies. Yeah. All right. Any question, folks? Any questions? Uh, more, more of a comment. Um, I like to read different versions. Uh -huh. um, this particular psalm, uh -huh. to me, um, I like how the psalm begins. Um, it, to me, it's different from all the other translations. It more or less um, shows you how uh, you step out. And uh, at first, you seem very innocent, but every step is leading you further from, <laughs> from God, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, so you are walking, and you are marveling, and you're looking you're at the scenery, and so on. And then you got so accustomed to it that you stand. You stand, mm -hmm. and then you sit, <laughs> you know? That's a, um, from a sermon standpoint, I, uh -huh. I like this one, the translation. All right. Reverend Delaney, you're looking at my notes for tomorrow's meditation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Please, when you all hear me say something tomorrow, I did not copy it from Reverend Delaney. <laughs> you will think about that. Okay. <laughs> okay. What, what I found interesting, I'm glad that he mentioned that, was that, as I mentioned to you before, I had done, I prepared for the, for the Bible study using different versions. Right. And it kind of gave a different emphasis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's interesting that depending, you can, the same, the same passage can actually give you completely different direction. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Although in the end they both talk about it, I, we got to the same conclusion. It was about choices, the righteous and the sinner. The, it, at the end, it was that, but the emphasis coming through is different, yeah. and that was uh, interesting. What I really wish I could do, but uh, I am all, very much limited in my Hebrew, would be to help us to understand that Hebrew is a, a, what we call an interpretative type language. It is not as exact as we would like in um, some of the language that has come out of Europe. Uh, language that come out of the East, okay, it is the context within which it is used whether it will give you a, a meaning this way or that way, okay? Yeah. So, um, the first um, translation of the Old Testament into another language was, in, was out of Hebrew into Greek. And the reason why it was translated into Greek was that um, when um, the Babylonians uh, came and invaded Jude Judea and J Jerusalem, people ran away. You know, when there's war, people uh, run as refugees and so forth, okay? And um, people ran to a place called Alexandria on the African continent in mm -hmm. Egypt where there was a Greek-speaking population. And a lot of the Jews there did, uh, learned Greek. 
So they translated the Hebrew because there were few people who could speak Hebrew. Hebrew was dying out. So they translated it into a language that, and now when they compare the Hebrew and the Greek, once you use a language, there are certain terms that go with the language. Okay, um, I never think that hanging out means the same as lying in. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't mean the same. There's a whole culture that comes with lying in. I was trying to explain this to our presiding elder more. Okay? Um, and I said, well, if you think about the guys who used to sit down on the block in some of the cities, it's a bit like that, but there's also fatigue. And then I had to say, oh gosh, you don't know what fatigue means. So I had to know, try next. You see, there is a language carries with it almost its own spirit mm -hmm. and its own construction. Okay. Um, I was listening to two people speak today, two workmen speak today. And when one of them is speaking to me, I can understand. When the two of them start speaking, I was out of it completely. <laughs> okay. Because they went, there is things in there. And the same thing happens with the Bible. Okay. All right. Um, now, we may get attached to a particular translation for different reasons. All right, um, but there is so much meaning when you look at the comparisons. Let us start. Yeah, so, what I, uh, so one of the points that just came to mind then that we should be always mindful of is to be very careful in delivering the literal meaning of the English word to explain what, the, what, a, what a verse or a, something in the, in the Bible is saying. We yeah. must be very, very wary of that. Okay. Yes, um, you can. If, if you are prepared and understand that, if you say, well, this is one way of looking at it. Okay. That would be correct. If you say this is the way of looking at it, that is when you could go into error. Right. And I, I have actually listened to... Yeah someone preach an entire sermon on an English word as this is it, not this is how you could, but this is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, there are some terms that cannot be translated. Okay. Um, okay, uh, in the original, I think this has now changed. But um, when they were trying to translate the Bible into Mandarin mm -hmm. in China, uh, the missionaries were out there somewhere around the uh, uh, 17th, 18th century. And they tried to translate the scripture, I am the bread of life. They had great difficulty because in China, they never use wheat to make bread. Okay, it was not a, um, a concept. As a matter of fact, they had what would be called, uh, we call it today, rice cake. Mm -hmm. All right? And so the literal translation in the old, um, in the first translation into Chinese or Mandarin is, I am the rice of life. Because that they understood. And it's called cultural equivalence. Mm -hmm. You have to find something in the culture that is equivalent or nearest to that which you're trying to describe. Sorry, this is getting way, 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 way complicated. I'm, I didn't mean to carry out a theological uh, study. Uh, Sister Diane, is still with us? Yes, please. I'm listening. Uh, yeah, but are you with, uh, have I lost you? No, I'm not sleeping. I'm here, I didn't here. sleeping. I meant um, understanding. Understand. Yeah, yes, yes. Okay. yes. Right. So far, uh -huh. so far. 
Good news that there is just that is that so I'm not sure if it's just a penny Lee I see it or uh, it's the palm. It's a palm. You see there? Why I see in the roof and the top of your head. <laughs> 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 Don't um, worry, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing you. All right, all right, okay. Um, please, please don't let me just go off on a tangent if it is not meaningful. All right, you see, pasta. Just, just use that to pasta and pull me back, right? Okay. Except Sister Glynis. I was just about to say I like that too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any any other questions, folks? That's Psalm um, one. That's um, drawing out uh, what I like to. Um, I, I want to use a Caribbean uh, illustration. Uh, you remember when we did um, we used to do sorrel in the ancient. Let me call it the ancient days. My childhood, uh, when they were doing sorrel, okay, um, you throw hot water on it and you let it um, draw your sorrel, <laughs> and then you think, but you send it around a second time, okay, and this time, um, well, my grandmother would take what we used to call a merino, all right, an old uh, vest. And she would put the same um, flowers, the sorrel flowers in it. Pour the hot water on it. And this time, she take one side and I take the other side. And we turn. And we squeeze it. To get the last of the substance that red. Um, out of it. Out of it. Okay. And this is what we're doing with the text. We're not just taking the thing off of the surface but we're squeezing it to get some of the goodness out. Amen. Any other questions? Any other comments? Anybody in England want to say anything? The English people going to sleep. Yes. Uh, this is not the hour for it. This is not the hour for that. Okay. I hear you now. Don't be picking on England. <laughs> <laughs> I like the um, I like the <clears throat> learning tip. Uh -huh. okay. If you follow the path, you end up where it leads. Because so, sometimes we see the tracks and all sort of things that, uh, that um, let us know it leading us to somewhere that look prettier and then end up lost or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you follow the track, we end up where it leads. If you follow the path, me, we end up where it leads. Yeah. I like that. Well, that is telling me if you follow the path of righteousness, you end up where. The Lord wants you to go. Yeah. You'll be righteous. <laughs> and if you follow the path of wickedness, you're going the wrong direction. Yeah. Destruction. Yeah. Eternity. One thing that is, one thing that is um, sometimes we would say, and it seems true, that life isn't fair, you know? Mm -hmm. But I find that in the end, at first, it was seem as though the, the person who has no regard for God is doing very well. But in the end, I think we are right in saying that um, every step on the path of righteousness, we can't go wrong. You know? Uh, yeah. Sometimes yeah. there are shortcuts that people take and they might uh, get from what uh, ahead of you and so on. But in the end, in the end, the question, if he, if he stays the course, you know, show a victory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is if this is this is telling me that if the the children follow the path of the other children that are going that are not doing right, 
they were going the wrong direction. My father always used to tell me, whoever help you buy a big gut horse, don't help you feed it. Which was telling me, don't follow those that are doing the wrong thing. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Well, thank you very much, folks. Uh, we will be looking at Psalms 100 mm -hmm. next week. Psalms 100. Right. Okay, next week. So that's the homework. Um, when our notices during the next few services, we could mention it so that folks could prepare themselves. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, let us bow our heads for prayer. Yeah. Lord, we wish to meditate upon your word day and night so that we would be better place to be used by you. Help us, O oh God, to be transformed, to be cleansed, to be built up by your word. Help us, O oh Lord, to see those impurities within ourselves. Yes, God. And to confess our sins before you. Jesus. For we do not desire to be in the path of the unrighteous or the ungodly. Yes, Lord. We want to remain on the path of righteousness. Yes, Lord. Lord, help us, O oh God. Be with us. Strengthen us as we study your word. Yes. Allow the Holy Spirit to bring back your word to our memory. Jesus. Help us to apply your word so that we could follow you all the days of our life. And we could dwell in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you very, very much for being around the table today. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, too, Pastor. Amen. Any announcements? Notices? I take it that the person who's leading on Sunday has submitted the order of service. Complete. Any yeah. additions for Sunday already been forwarded. Today is Wednesday. I think the time requested was six o'clock. Okay. Um, Reverend Grant, I don't know if you were aware. Um, I did do a program last night, but this morning around 10 o'clock, I saw um, a program that has been prepared by the WHOMS. Okay. So, um, Sister Pam, are you aware of the, the program? No, I didn't get to check to see if she has sent it. Okay, um, Sister Diane. You shared a program with me, didn't you? Yes, please. Um, she sent it. Um, First Lady sent it. So I sent it out to Holmes, and I sent it out also on our chat. Okay. So, um, Sister Pam, if you could just, if we need to make any changes, I would say let's just use the program as is and put in the um, tribute you wanted to make. Okay. All right, and I hope we know those hymns. I will look at it and see. All right, yeah. Okay. So I, I try to fulfill my side of the bargain, ma'am. Thank you very much. But um, if something is sent in the chat, I would not necessarily think it would have been the order of service. So I honestly did not open it. I saw it. I just thought it was information on it, on the, the person we recognizing. And I yeah, did not, the, I did not the program is in there. The program is in there. It's right. attached with it. Well, I wasn't aware of that, so I didn't open it. Um, I would have expected it to come by email 
but just so you would know that I don't necessarily always open, open the WhatsApp attachments. All right. Um, thank you all so much for uh, the greetings of um, uh, it's Brother Kami. What's his name? Did I get the name right? Um, Kami. Kami. Yeah. Um, is that oh. short for something else? Um, uh, Sinclair. Okay, Cameron. Yeah. Oh, it's Cameron. It's Cameron Sinclair. Cami. We call him Cami. Right, yeah. We call him Cami. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So thank you for um, just greeting him and uh, for passing his contacts on, etc. Okay. Well done. That's that's what I like to see us doing. Okay. Okay. Anyone else need me? Um, I don't want people to say I run off the line. <laughs> well, I'm going to run off the line because I have a call that I said it was going to be free at 7. Okay. All righty. Okay, then everybody have a blessed night. Okay, God bless you all. Uh, uh, we, meet, we meet on Friday for night. Yes. Uh, yes, please. All right. Um, I need to tell you all I only have half a packet of snacks. <laughs> <laughs> we will talk about discipline. <laughs> we, will talk, we will talk about discipline at some point in time. I'm sure you will. Yeah. Hi. Diana. Hey, good day. Diana. Yes, please. Uh, Pastor. Could you please call me? Okay. I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye. <laughs>